We're gonna go into all the key elements behind strength training for rugby, and we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dave Miller from GarageStrength.com. If this is your first time to the channel, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you smash that notification bell so we can help you become a beast. So the sport of rugby is an extremely complicated sport. We've got to look at it right away from the perspective of, are we talking about 15s or are we talking about sevens? And I think for this discussion for strength training for rugby, although sevens is what's in the Olympics, what I want to really talk about today is mainly going to be referring to 15s. So when we're talking about 15s, there's going to be a lot longer of a game. There's clearly more athletes on the field. So when there's a little more athletes on the field, play can be a little bit more complicated. The games are much longer. The break at the half is also much longer. So that enables a lot of athletes to be a little bit bigger. And when athletes are a little bit bigger, that means the scrummaging, the mauling, that's gonna be a little bit more intense. And that leads to a sport that has a lot of big dudes that are extremely fast, extremely aggressive, extremely skilled. So this is a sport that's gonna be similar. It's like a perfect mold between American football and soccer or European football as, as we refer to it. But we're in the United States, so everybody calls it soccer. So when we're thinking about those characteristics, you've got to have really good speed, especially if you are a fly half or a scrum half. If you're a fly half or a scrum half, you're gonna be really fast. You're gonna be extremely skilled. You're gonna be the more talented player on the team. And on top of that, you're gonna have really good passing capability. So you have to be able to handle in long periods of time that good contact, have really good speed, and still channel that really good endurance to help maintain those skills later on in the game. So more of those characteristics, there's gonna be a lot of cutting, there's a lot of lateral work, there's a lot of stop and go, there's a lot of contact, okay? There's a lot of actual physical grappling, there's a lot of pushing, there's a lot of pulling. So we have to think about that as a key characteristic when we're triggering those elements that we wanna focus on in the world of strength and conditioning, what we're gonna be doing in the weight room. And then finally, one of those key characteristics is that we have to have really good endurance. We have to be able to handle the length of that game, the constant contact, the high levels of speed, the high levels of skill, because skill work can fatigue the brain significantly. So it's not just from that aerobic capacity, but it's also from that mental capacity that we have to focus on when we're actually training inside the weight room. So we need to analyze what are these key characteristics behind playing 15s rugby, and then how are we gonna move into training and what those elements are gonna be inside the weight room. And so right off the bat, we can use this to determine what those elements are gonna be. And when we can determine what those elements can be, now we're gonna go right into that technical coordination. So remember, you're doing really skilled passes, you're making adjustments on the fly on where your pass is going to be, what that play is going to specifically be. So I believe technical coordination is an absolute imperative part behind strength training for rugby. So what does that mean? Technical coordination means being able to coordinate your body at very high speeds with a technical movement. So this could be reflexive work. You might be doing a dumbbell snatch into a hip lock or a power snatch or, or a power clean or a full clean. So these are all movements that have a very high degree of coordination and they're technically focused. And if you can train that in the weight room, you're gonna be able to recruit appropriately out on the field and even if you're in the weight room and you're getting yourself into a state of fatigue while you're doing a weightlifting movement let's say you're doing a clean off of one box at seven inches off the floor and you're doing 12 singles on the minute now by that ninth tenth eleventh twelfth minute you're going to be very very fatigued but you're going to have to really focus on that mind muscle connection to execute that technical coordination at the rate that you need it to be. And that's where it's gonna transfer really well to speed, to contact, and even to endurance along with those skills. Now another key factor behind rugby is that when we're talking about the big dudes, the props, the hookers, these are guys that are going to be huge. They're big. So they're going to be in scrums hammering each other, right? So we, they have to be bigger. They have to engage with a large amount of force and they have to train with some absolute strength movements. So doing a back squat, doing a front squat, 
even doing some standard bodybuilding work to increase that overall mass, that's gonna be a key attribute behind improving that absolute strength. If we can get these guys a little bit bigger and we're training that technical coordination, now they're walking around, they look like middle linebackers, maybe even to a point, someone like a D end, and they're absolute phenom athletes with really good speed as well. So we wanna utilize absolute strength for a specific element that's gonna bring out and improve their technical coordination. And overall, that's gonna lead to better contact and better speed. Now, the next two elements that I really like to work with are gonna be reactiveness and dynamic trunk control, okay? So reactiveness, you've gotta be able to cut rapidly. You've gotta be able to cut and hit somebody rapidly. You have to be able to, when you're cutting, focus on utilizing your trunk. So think about this. This is an exercise I stole directly from Franz Bosch. If I'm standing with my butt against the wall and I'm raising a plate here, now all of a sudden my entire trunk, my gut and my mid back is gonna fire and recruit all at one time. I like to utilize movements like that to trigger that dynamic trunk control. Utilizing exercises for reactiveness might be we're just doing standard plyometric work, okay? We're gonna have that plyometric work, that's gonna lead to greater speed. That's gonna lead to greater joint integrity and joint stiffness. When joint stiffness goes up, we can run faster, we can cut harder, and that is also going to help us improve that dynamic trunk control. If we're doing movements like technical coordination exercises, cleans, snatches, front squats with absolute strength, back squats, and we're pairing them accordingly with some dynamic trunk control, or we're training reactiveness and we're doing a plyometric series, then we're resting for two to three minutes, and then maybe we do some specific dynamic trunk control exercises during that break period. Now that's going to lead to greater improvement and greater execution of all those characteristics that we need out on the pitch to dominate our opponents. And finally, that last element, and I also have it as a characteristic, so it's a little bit of a crossover, is going to be endurance. Now that doesn't mean that I think rugby players should be walking around training like 800 meter runners or training like, like 5K runners. They shouldn't be distance runners, okay? Some of these guys need to have really, really good speed, so maybe they will be training like 200 or 400 meter runners, but they still have to be a little bit bigger. They still have to do some more absolute strength, some more hypertrophy work to increase that absolute strength. And they also have to do some technical coordination work so that they learn how to absorb force, absorb energy accordingly, and then reuse that out on the field. But it's important to recognize how endurance plays into all this. And that might mean we're getting into the sauna more regularly with our bigger guys so that we can do some easy improvements just from sauna work. We're gonna get on the bike two to three days a week. They're gonna do the assault bike for steady state cardio. It could be 20 to 30 minutes, maybe three times a week just to help them increase their baseline, their foundation of endurance. Maybe they're going out for walks three to four days a week. And that's one thing that I'll say, I spent a lot of time in Suva, Fiji, and I was able to see some of the sevens guys and even some of the best guys that played for the local team. Okay, some of those guys would go out, they'd run hills. Twice a week, they'd sit there and go 10 to 12 hills right next to the stadium. And that's gonna help improve their speed and improve their overall endurance. So take that endurance from the perspective of utilizing it more from an interval-based perspective and utilize easier means of endurance, like walking, like riding the assault bike, like doing easy work on the rower, getting into the sauna, and even utilizing things like uh, beta alanine, something along those lines as a supplement to help drastically improve your endurance overall. Don't sit there and say, all right, endurance work, we've gotta go out and run for five or six miles because that's gonna create a massive detriment to your absolute strength, your technical coordination, and you're probably even gonna get a little bit slower with that reactiveness, and that's gonna to lead to you getting hammered out on the pitch. So utilize all of these key elements to design your strength training program. And if you need help, we put together a full program that's designed specifically with all of these elements to help improve your overall play for that specific position so that you can dominate out on that pitch and become that next absolute monster on the world stage. So if you need help with designing a program, you can click on the link down below, head over to garagestrength.com and pick up our strength training for rugby program. We use all of these elements to increase your training. We put it into a one periodized program that's going to help you become an absolute beast. You can click on the link down below, head over to garagestrength.com. And if you have any questions about rugby-based training, click on the link down below, head over to our subreddit and let us know what you think so we can help you dominate your opponents. Peace.